Hey guys, what is going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech, and I'm super excited to show you this brand new product from Raspberry Pi, which is the Raspberry Pi Zero 2W. So let's get started. Now, first, I do want to thank Raspberry Pi for sending this over to me for review, and there is a lot to go over. So let's begin. Now, at first glance, the Raspberry Pi Zero 2W, which I'm just going to call Zero 2, uh, is the same exact form factor as the predecessor or 01. They did not change any of the ports and kept everything the same size. You will still have the micro USB for power and the other one for OTG, as well as the mini HDMI. And then the SD card is still in the same position as well as the CSI interface. GPIO layout is exactly the same. So as far as the design wise, nothing has changed. Now, if you take a look at the back, the pinouts to the Raspberry Pi Zero first version is slightly different. Now, you could still use the cases that you have that requires the OTG or the power pins. They are still in the same spot, but they added the ability to see the DDR 1.2 volt and as well as the CPU 1.8 volt or not the CPU. But one cool thing that they did add is the ability to use composite video mode. So that's also a pinout on the bottom. One of the things I wish they did have on the original Raspberry Pi Zero because I needed to use it for certain projects. They also labeled everything so it's a lot easier to read compared to the first version. So I like that as well. Now hardware wise, that's where everything has been changed. And this one has quad core running at one gigahertz. The only downside to this board is that it's only got 512 megs of RAM. And I'll talk more about that in a little bit because I got a solution for you guys. As far as the Wi-Fi goes, it's actually using a similar module to what you would get on the Raspberry Pi 4, which is great because I am getting way much better reception now. As far as powering this guy, on idle, it runs around 0.1 amp at 5 volts. Uh, that means it's about 600 watts or 700 watts right around that area. Similar to what you would get from the Raspberry Pi 1, just a little bit more. And at full load, I do see it go up to 0.6 amps. As of right now, the only operating system I have tested is Raspberry Pi OS. And I have tried to plug in other operating systems, but without the kernel for the new CPU, those operating systems did not work. I do want to test a lot of different operating systems on this guy because the quad core is actually a pretty good CPU on this. Now jumping into the benchmarks, I'm going to show you the comparison between this one and the first version and you can see it's heaps better. I mean it's quad core compared to single even though it's at the same speed. But what surprises me the most, here I'm going to pop in Raspberry Pi 4 and Raspberry Pi 3. And as you can see, this benchmark is slightly faster than the Raspberry Pi 3. And I've tested this a couple of times just to make sure and yes, Every time, this CPU, even though it's slower than the Raspberry Pi 3 at 1.2, and this is at 1, it still does slightly faster benchmarks. Now, the whole downside about this Raspberry Pi when I was testing it is because of the 512 megs of RAM. With the lack there of RAM, you have tons of issue running any heavy applications, especially just trying to run a browser and running five seconds of a video, it will crash an entire system. Now, there are two ways to fix this. One, which is not a very clever solution, which is enabling swap. You can enable swap to the SD card, get maybe another gig of RAM. Anytime you try to run something heavy, it has something to fall back to. Or two, you could follow my GitHub and actually install ZRAM. I've updated script recently, so now it's just the install process. All you have to do is go into git clone, github, nova spirit, rpi underscore zram, download that, change into that directory, and just run the install script. That will actually install a service into the Raspberry Pi, which will run a script that will calculate how much RAM that you should be using per core per compression. So basically, zram is compressed RAM. It's going to take the four cores, which now that we have, and compress the RAM to give you swap. And by doing that, you will now get about 1.7 gigs of RAM extra in swap, which now allows you to play videos or anything that requires a little bit more RAM. In our case, I was just playing a YouTube video. It did okay. It's not the greatest. It did have some drop frames, especially when I was running 1080 videos, but otherwise, it was able to run it after you put some swap into it. As far as the Wi-Fi goes, I compared this directly to the Raspberry Pi Zero. And at the same exact position, running the same exact Wi-Fi network, I am seeing an increase of signal on this newer board. So compared to the old one, you do get a better signal. Now, I also took my time and I overclocked the CPU. And yes, you can actually overclock this one now. I was able to get it a maximum of 1.3 gigahertz with over voltage of six and it ran stable. I did try 1.4 gigahertz and then that's where it started crashing. So I didn't do increments like, you know, 3.5 or 3.75. I just literally went 100 megahertz a piece 
and then it stopped at 400 and then I rolled back to 300 and then that's where it was stable. And at 1.3 gigahertz, that's a 30% increase in speed for the Raspberry Pi Zero. And this thing actually works pretty well. It boots up relatively fast compared to the predecessor of Raspberry Pi Zero. And I think it's a slightly faster than Raspberry Pi 3 when it's booting up. In all honesty, I, I use my Raspberry Pi 3 for a lot of projects like Octopi or CNC machines and stuff. I think I might just want to replace it with the Raspberry Pi Zero. Now on top of that, how much is this board going to cost? All in all, $15. I'll leave a link to everything we talked about down in the description below. I'm not exactly sure where you could purchase it yet, but probably their regular distributors like Pi Hut and all these other places. But yeah, it's going to be only $15. In conclusion, compared to the Raspberry Pi Zero, this is a huge step up because the main thing that was lacking on the Raspberry Pi Zero was the CPU. You weren't able to process much information through the Raspberry Pi Zero, especially trying to run something a little bit heavier then it's normal task, it'll either it'll lag a lot or just have issues running it. Now, I do use my Raspberry Pi Zero a lot. Uh, I have it for a Raspberry Pi Hub, which I'll leave a link here. I run it for our KVM, which I'll leave a link here, here as well. And then I have a few other projects that I run the Raspberry Pi Zero for. So basically this new board will be able to do all those tasks, but better because I do run into issues with the board being too slow, especially when you're trying to turn it into a little webcam, it definitely lacks their in power trying to force feed the information to be encoded and everything. While the RAM is low, it's not really an issue if you use the compressed RAM method that I just showed you. You should be able to run all the programs that you need. Anyway, I am glad that they moved over to the new one because the old one was starting to get outdated. It was starting to get to a point where there was a lot of things I wouldn't use because it was too slow. Anyway, that is it for me. If you guys have any questions about this brand new Raspberry Pi Zero or anything that you want me to test on the Raspberry Pi Zero 2, let me know down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.